Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers. I've been talking with Congressman Wesley Hunt, the freshman from the 38th Congressional District, newly created. We're talking about the gun violence in this country and your solution, some of your suggested mm -hmm. solutions. Some will say, we just got too many guns. Mm -hmm. And you, your, your response to that is, don't even bother, don't even touch the guns that are out there, touch the laws that are in place that need to be enforced? I think we, again, I think I said earlier, we need to prosecute those that, that need to be prosecuted. There are roughly 360 million guns currently in population right. in this country. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, that, that's actually more than one, one weapon per person in this entire country. And at, th at this point, you, it's, it's, it's Pandora's box. It's, it, it's already out there. So the issue, in my humble opinion, is actually not the gun. It's actually the person behind it. And how do we keep, again, again, violent criminals from getting guns? Now, we have seen a rise in criminal activity in this country over the course of the past couple, over the course of the past few years. We have open borders. When you have an issue with defunding the police and you, you're looking at what's happening just economically in this country, we're seeing a boom in crime in our, in our, in our country. I will say this about Harris County, and I will say this about, about Mayor Turner. Other cities like us have seen this catastrophic rise in murder rates and killing and crime because they defunded their police. Mayor Turner actually didn't do that. He actually funded our police more in Houston, Texas. And when you compare our population and our city to, to, to other large, large, large cities like Chicago, like L.A., like New York, like New Orleans, like Atlanta, we don't have the same problems because our mayor did a pretty good job on that kind of stuff. You know, I noticed you say uh, defund and open borders. Those yeah. are talking points. Uh, they, yeah. they tend to be talking points anyway. Oh, open yeah, borders is not really, not really open borders, but, it, but that's, the, that's the general consensus that this... The numbers have gone down recently. Do you think that's a result of the newest policies put into place, or do you think it's just a temporary lull and it's going to go back up? So when I look at over the course of the last two years, like numbers are numbers and facts are facts, and I, I hate that those have become talking points, mm -hmm. and you're right, mm -hmm. they have. But I consider open borders and I consider an invasion at the border to be five million people entering our country illegally. As somebody that has served abroad and been all over this world and lived in Saudi Arabia and served in, in Iraq, this doesn't happen across the world, by the way. Mm -hmm. No country allows five million people to enter their country illegally. And that's the perspective that I have on mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So when I say open borders, I'm comparing it to what other countries in the world would do in the same situation. And that just doesn't happen. Hard turn right now. for well, What are we going to do about uh, Representative Santos? Uh, as long as he is there, he's been proven to be someone who's really, he says embellish. That's not right. <laughs> he lied. He lied. He, he, all Fine of out. his constituents, he Fine lied out. and everything else. Yeah. That's, that's a, seems to be like a sore point. Yeah. And it's not good for your party, I wouldn't think. I mean, what is your sense of that? It's not. It's actually not good for the country. And for someone like me that takes my background very seriously, uh, I, I'm the guy that went to West Point, and my brother and sister are also went to West Point, and I served my country as an Apache helicopter pilot. I have three master's degrees from, from Cornell University and Ivy League school, and I take a lot of pride in what I've done in my life. And when I see someone embellish their backgrounds, it cheapens actually what I did for this country and what I've done for myself to get here. So what I also want to say is, is this. Democrats did about 148 page worth of opposition research on me over the course of the past four years. Mm -hmm. Why would well, they do it on him? And they admit that they dropped the ball on that. And I, I wonder yeah. why. But now that they're here, now that he's there, why? Well, everybody wonders why yeah. at this point. But now that he's here, what? Let the process take its course until he... He whatever. won. He won. Mm -hmm. And then now it's up to the people in his district to figure out what they want to do with it over wow. the course of the next so few they, years. Two, so he's there for the next couple of years there's, as far as you're concerned. There's nothing we can do about it. Wow. OK, well, that's very different from a lot, what a lot of people yeah. say and what happened in the Democratic House when somebody was doing things that weren't quite right. I remember Pelosi said, hey, you know, they had a conversation. Next thing you know, he resigned. So yeah. Maybe that might be the best thing to do if that were up to him. But you're saying, hey, if he doesn't want to go, then he our can stay. Our Constitution is up to we the people. I, I've heard that. I've and heard the people that. have to decide that for their district. And I would think that somebody who doesn't have the moral fiber to be able to do, quote, what's right, yeah. maybe that's really... Anyway, okay, 2024. You want to take the White House back, I know. Of course. At this point, um, uh, Nikki uh, Haley has announced that she's running. Yeah. President, Former President Trump has said he's running as well. You've yeah. already thrown your hat into the ring. I mean, your endorsement uh, behind President Trump at this point, correct? Yes, yes. And why is that? Because I want to get back to the where we, where we were in 2016, 2017, and 2018. I think we need to do 
a direct reversal of some of the policies that we have seen over the course of the past few years. And President Trump has been able to do that because he's a proven entity. President Trump can only run one more time. There's only four years left and he can't run again. And what I would love to see is President Trump come back. We have a great reset, and then we have young, great candidates like Nikki Haley, like Ron DeSantis, like a Tim Scott, who's actually been my mentor over the course of the, of the past few years, like a Mike Pompeo. All these men and women are under the age of 60, and then we have an opportunity to catapult us into the next eight years to have a great renaissance like we saw during the Reagan years. Okay, so we got Newsmakers Extra. We're going to continue this conversation. I yeah. told you we'd have to take a half hour. <laughs> We're going to continue this conversation with that on the 2020 and some of the content sure. about that on Newsmakers Extra. Go to the Newsmakers page on clicktohouston.com and pick up our conversation there. Congressman, thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate you being here.